His abysms of bliss became insensible deep. Abysm. Now here, abysms means here the profundities. In the sense of profundities, not abyss. Of bliss became insensible deeps. They have lost their sensitivities. Eternity, a blank spiritual vast. So this is a total involution. Eternity, a blank spiritual vast. Annulling an original nullity, the timeless took its ground in emptiness and drew the figure of a universe that the spirit might adventure into time and wrestle with adamant necessity and the soul pursue a cosmic pilgrimage. So, in these few sentences, seven sentences, rather six sentences, she had described quickly the involution. His abysms of bliss have become insensible, have become blank, a spiritual vast, the opposite. That is the involution. I can't understand this. Annulling an original nullity. This is how the original inane happened. She is describing how the original inane has taken place. This is what he was talking of. Everything is from that. Everything is from that. But she is going back. No, no, no. There is somebody who has created this in men for a purpose. He has become a traveler. And therefore, the march of life begins now from that. He has become a traveler, no? For new discovery. I want to discover myself. In a different manner. Therefore, I disappear from myself. You see, if I don't disappear from myself, there is nothing new then for me. Therefore, I should totally disappear. That disappearance means involution. What the Brahadaranika Upanishad says, I, uh, is it Brahadaranika? Sorry. Chaitirya Upanishad says, I want to be many. I am alone, I feel very lonely, feel uh, the necessity of companionship. How do I do that? I want companions. I want to be many. <laughs> bahusyam, bahusyam, many, bahusyam, praja, yeti. I want to have praja, many, many, many. I am alone. I feel very lonely, tired, not happy. How do I become many? Therefore, I disappear from myself. And then out of it, the many will come out. That many, at the moment, they are all ignorant, stupid creatures like we today. <laughs> but that many has to become like me, divine. That is the purpose of my becoming many. So it is a travel, it is a process that we are standing here in between, you see. Bahusyam, Praja, Yeti, Bahusyam, many. Bahu means many. Praja, creations. I want to be many. So I disappear myself totally from that. Without that, it cannot happen. See, if I remain there, I will see myself everywhere. Then what is the new in that? All my sensibility, all my faculties of awareness, of cognition, they must disappear first. Then only the new faculties can come. So, that is something very great of him. To nullify yourself totally like that is the greatest act of being egoless. 
totally ego nothing of me and when you become that ego less then you can become truly everybody he is a vision of bliss so he she is talking you know he is a vision of bliss of course he is she is talking of god that he stands for god here obviously this god is not the theological god this god is the supreme himself paratpara so this phrase his abhisam so please again echoes back the same upanishad from bliss we came in bliss we live we go back into bliss that is the travel to be many to have creation and the soul pursues yeah and therefore is and so now she is now talking now the other part of it annulling is original nullity the timeless took its ground in emptiness timeless took its ground in emptiness that's the void so from there the time is start happening well actually when the total involution took place sorry when the total separation from the divine occurred you had totally absorbed yourself you see the horror of this creation as the mother says and then the divine plunged into that void the divine plunged into that void and then the movement started appearing now the divine plunged into that void when the total separation took place when the total absorption was there so to say that the mother says he is the permanent avatar and his name is satyavan it is he now who is present in that void he he has withdrawn himself and again plunge into it as a seed or whatever to call it and from that things have started so that is the beginning of time timeless he is there all along always so that in evolution the total absorption is followed by the plunge the divine into the void and then the process begins otherwise how does it happen took its ground in emptiness took its ground he has taken the station now and drew the figure of a universe that the spirit might adventure into time so that is what is the work satyavan is doing in savitri we don't see anything what that fellow is doing and why why savitri is fighting for him the spirit adventure into time that is the work he has been doing silently behind the whole scene and wrestle with the adamant necessity and the soul pursue a cosmic pilgrimage the soul pursue a cosmic pilgrimage that is what he is doing a spirit mode in black immensities and build a thought in ancient nothingness now now she is slowly bring into picture timeless time evolution growth progress and spirit moved in black immensity and built a thought in ancient nothingness a soul in god's tremendous void was lit a soul in god's tremendous void was lit God's tremendous void, the soul, that is the 
presence of Satyavan there in the language of Savitri, in the language of the mother. So first of the, yeah, you can say, plunge the other side. First, not only first, permanent of the. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Oh, that is that is in the process of time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> A secret laboring glow of nascent fire. What a phrase this is. Now, this is a description you won't get in light divine. Because it has now been just lit. Right. Nascent fire. fire. It is just lit into the void. A secret laboring for a purpose, for timeless to go through the time and proceed on its endless path. In the Puranas, they call it Vishnu, the inconscient Vishnu. He is asleep there, always. Asleep on the bed of a serpent with thousand hoods. Serpent with thousand holes on that bed is asleep permanently there. Thousand holes, serpent, serpent are the powers, energies which are locked there on which he is asleep. The Puranic Vishnu. He is there for a purpose, you see, according to the Puranas. The inconscient Vishnu. So, I, I think I told you earlier, no? On one occasion, Narad happens to go to meet this Vishnu. He will go and meet Vishnu anywhere, everywhere. So, he goes to Patala in the lowest pit there and sees Vishnu there. And then this Vishnu is being worshipped by the sons of darkness. Diti, who has separated herself from the divine, her sons, her power, they are offering their worship to this Vishnu who is asleep there. You see. So he says that look, that worship of the divine is there everywhere. You are seeing it as dark, but the aspect, the spirit of worship is present even in that place, even in the darkness. Who is offering that is a separate matter. For what is separate? But the aspect of worshipping the divine, the supreme, is there everywhere. And therefore, Narada is supposed to be, is called the supreme bhakta, the matchless bhakta. Everywhere he says he is Vishnu, everywhere. A soul in God's tremendous void was lit, a secret laboring glow. You see, she says glow of nascent fire. It is still glows. It. 